Yoski, another project, um, the latest one, uh, this time, uh, well, a weird fork thing, uh, which you obviously read the title, it's a mini road rack thing, again, great problems with naming the stuff that I'm making, but yeah, it's a steel wire construction, soldered uh, together, and yes, I pronounced the D in solder, I'm not Northern American, so you know, I, you excuse me for that. Now, just to show you for like why even, uh, so starting with, yeah, what for? These things, I have quite a bunch of them, so basically, you know, if you just, well, maybe I should just show, like, if you just splay them down, these take a lot of space, and as usual, shoebox stuff, spaces are the premium. So, an idea to just hold them more vertically. I have more vertical space. So, yeah, I was thinking about something as easy to make and as, I would say, light, as in not, you know, no walls, no box-ish thing. And uh, came up with this idea. And this is also exactly shaped like that because I first looked for a place where I would like to keep them long term. And I found like very little vertical space. So it's again, it's all about constraints and interplay between them. Basically guiding the design up to a point and as usual, everything is a prototype. So yeah, as you can see, fits all of them quite neatly. You can even more or less like take the whole thing as a single thing and just move it around. Which is actually a bonus. I wasn't thinking about this aspect when I was designing it. So, you know, nice bonus. Now, just to get it out of the way and, you know, let you have context, these things, uh, again, how would should I call them? I think the best analogy would be like a 3D printer filament, but it's not meant for a 3D printer, it's meant for manual use. It's marketed as uh, plastics for repair, like automotive bumpers, uh, I don't know, maybe some plastic interior and appliance uh, repair, which nowadays seems extremely weird i mean come on like would you actually repair like a broken toaster like you know like if you've bumped or like made a, made the hole in the in your plastic toaster but in any case uh plastics basically this sort of uh, uh let me try rods of uh, relatively random shapes i mean the cross sections of them yeah that, that works this side rod wise so yeah i've got uh, i think half a dozen of different things and it's mostly the plastics that i have so pa66 pet pet pmma pvc acrylic no, that's acrylic yeah polycarbonate polyethylene phreptalate polypropylene our favorite cheapo plastic so abs and uh, last but not least pvc though i've probably told you that in any case so bought a bunch of these i've repackaged them with like um, tie wires because they were you know just like had a sticker keeping them together which it's a cheap way for the seller to do it it's not something that's going to be useful in practice and i've done a little experimental thing with the labeling here because i want the labels to be reusable so it's a very much of a prototype you know quick and dirty thing uh, but uh, we can kind of call it like have a project though i'm not noting this sort of stuff as a project in my project spreadsheet it's basically like a you know like a cable label out of a printer and an eyelet river rivet apologies and some uh, tie wires and yeah i mean it's uh, pretty far from perfect as you can see here it's pa66 but the six got cut because i've made it too short but, you know, don't worry if you, like, flip it around. You can see the 6 here, but not the P. But <laughs> if you look at both sides, you can actually, you know, like, if you have no idea what it is, if you look at both sides, you will get, like, all the information needed uh, about those. So, yeah, I haven't even got into using those. Uh, it's, I think, maybe for this weekend. Who knows? It, there's always something going on, so... But, yeah, materials and labeling which is nice, and again, this plops in here. And let's get back to the actual thing. 
so yeah steel wire and um, the wire that i featured uh, well i've used it already in a number of projects it's a three millimeter diameter low carbon uh, steel which is like basically it's ductile and uh, it's zinc coated and they sell it as a wire for if you have like wire fencing so this is the stuff you would put across and then tension it and that would keep your uh, fence basically in place so uh, yeah it's uh, three pieces of uh, wire the main one like the spine is 30 centimeters long and then those two u shapes which uh, are not symmetric right now and they won't be but basically yeah i mean that's a thing you know like as you progress and like when you make prototypes you design as you go so my measurements my initial plan was for this to be 10 centimeters uh, tall uh, 4 centimeters wide here and 10 centimeters tall here with like this being the most critical dimension because i wanted to have like two of these uh, fitting at the bottom and as you can see i have achieved that so when i was cutting this wire instead of cutting uh, 24 centimeters you know like 10 10 and 4 i knew that when you bend stuff which is not you know like which has any like width to it which is basically anything like realistically anything you will have a bend radius and i know there is math like there is actual math to let you like tell how this will work out so you could spend time and i believe this old tony has a video exactly about this thing and it's uh it gets into the depth so if you like that you i mean or in general interested you can check that out i just you know like added two more centimeters so cut 26 centimeters uh, long pieces for both of the let's call it the u ends and uh, yeah i was mostly concerned about getting the four centimeters here which i got and then was left with you know like one of them sticking uh, a little bit more and you know what i have decided that you know this is actually not bad now you have sides to it so the way it sits like this is the right side this is the left side so yeah i mean it's fine and i mean two more things about that yes you need to grind the uh, ends of them because when you cut them with like a wire cutter they're going to be pretty stubby implements you know, like a fork so you also need to like have some material to be able to grind it and you know like make it nice another thing is about uh, just the idea of cutting so cutting is the sort of an asymmetric operation it's extremely easy to cut stuff but it's impossible to uncut it uh, which is why my wisdom here would be that do not cut unless you're absolutely sure that you need to and if you don't need to cut do not cut i mean you can always do that it's like two seconds to snap it off and if you've snapped it and made a mistake, <laughs> you're not gonna be undoing it. Like, I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Solder it back, it's not going to be the same. But yeah, uh, that's about the U-shapes. Now about the main thing, which is like, which was the main thing I was like trying to do was actually soldering steel wires, like mechanical soldering, cause I'm pretty good at, you know, electronic soldering. Maybe not the SMD stuff, like the super small stuff, but uh, anything old school i mean i'm pretty good at it this is somehow somewhat different um, because you know of the sizes and the amount of heat you need uh, to actually get that but yeah well, while we're here let me try to show you the quality or lack of the quality of the joints themselves so like two sides and uh, so yeah, I've done, I think, three test pieces before I've uh, said to myself that, yeah, should be good enough, and let's try to do the thing that I actually wanted to do. So I would say that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is a nice outcome. And uh, yeah, last but not least, at least for this segment, uh, yes, I know that this is not straight. So, you know, this uh, wire, you get it as a big coil. And I still haven't uh, managed to get a method of uh, actually straightening it out. Straightening it out, apologies. And um, you know, it's a pretty linear relationship. The longer the pieces, the more difficult it is to actually get it fully straight in like all dimensions. I'm basically doing this with vices and like the vice grip for uh, 
sheet metal folding and yeah if you have any ideas and again like shoebox uh, no big machines etc uh, etc et I'll be really happy to hear my only idea right now is to maybe try to like hang it and put some weight on it so you know, like basically do what it is supposed to be doing uh, when it's used for a uh, wire fence just stretch it with weight but yeah it's, uh, it's an idea no implementation so yeah most of the work uh, at least in those like time spent is on trying to make the wires as straight as possible and then on bending and then the soldering itself is like the quickest operation of them all all right i think i've actually covered everything i had in mind so the next segment it's uh, again experiments in videography i have a couple of photos when i was actually doing this a week or two ago and uh, they are at the stage where this is completed but i still have all the crap i've used lying around so i'm gonna try to like show you a picture point to stuff and talk a bit about this stuff and we'll see uh, how it uh, goes and that means that this video will be edited so i can already tell you at this point okay a second time uh, trying to do a voiceover uh, this time over uh, well a photo set of photos so yeah i've actually been uh, done this uh, exactly last week last friday so nice timing and the voiceover setup this time uh, is different hopefully the audio quality will be much better and um, you know i'm kind of a fractal person there are details and things and everything is an experiment and there's a lot to learn so yeah let's go we have the uh, setup here for actually making uh, the thing being the thing so you know the first thing you cannot uh, solder without solder i mean da obviously now uh, Two things about this one, uh, this is actually a tin and a lead based one, I mean you can get those at least you know as a home gamer here quite easily, I think this is Polish made, it's 60-40 uh, so 60% tin, 40% uh, lead, but as usual don't quote me on that, and uh, it's 1.2 millimeters uh, in diameter which makes it a very thick solder. And yeah, I had to actually look for that because, you know, the stuff that I use for electronics, which I bought uh, like the same company, the same kind of uh, roll thing, but it's like a half a kilogram, like 500 grams, so you know, like a pound of solder. That one is probably less than half a millimeter thick. And yeah, I mean, for electronics, perfect. For mechanical stuff, a thicker one will definitely help you because, you know, you need a lot more of it. And this might have flux inside but again don't quote me on that my electronics one definitely has flux inside but yeah once you have solder the next thing you need is uh, a source of heat and by heat i mean a lot of heat like for this kind of stuff i would say 500 degrees centigrade is what you want maybe even more but in any case uh, the stuff that i'm using here again nothing sponsored so i won't mention the uh, the manufacturer what i like about this stuff uh, like this particular instance of a heat gun because you know like a heat gun or like even a torch but the point is that this doesn't have an open flame which makes it somewhat safer and easier to use because you just have a really hot air coming out of the business end and uh, yeah i mean you could do it with torch i think most people do it with just like propane if you're in the us or butane for whatever reasons here in Europe but uh, yeah I mean your electronics uh, soldering gun pen thing uh, I don't think you will be having much uh, fun with that because again we're doing mechanical stuff a lot more heat capacity in all of the elements so you know like trying to heat it with like uh, this uh, pine seal pencil TS 1000 or whatever it is Maybe you'll be able to do that, but it will take a lot of time and be very frustrating. So you need something bigger. Right, now we have uh, both the solder and the uh, heat source. So yeah, you can do stuff, but you know, you will actually require a fireproof space. Um, again, it's uh, hundreds of degrees centigrade. Um, so if you look on the right where the heat gun is resting on, that's like a silicon pad which I use for electronics and it's perfectly fine for that. You know, any sort of splatter 
etc etc but uh, for mechanical stuff you should probably get something a lot more substantial like those two fire bricks here and uh, yes i wasn't aware back then when i was buying those that you actually can get them at like um, half uh, sized so like um, half the height basically half sized yeah and that would be like completely sufficient for what we're doing here but i got the usual like full-sized bricks i have four of them so you know this again is a question about uh, future and options and modularity in a way i mean with this stuff i can build more substantial stuff and i do have like a proper like a uh, torch that also has this like air intakes and that goes probably to about a thousand degrees centigrade. I mean, I used it once for removing paint from one thing and I was actually measuring the temperature, but not directly. It was like wedged be between two of those bricks and I've got like 750 degrees centigrade. So yeah, a thousand like in the flame, it's uh, definitely sensible. And you know, like if you're dealing with those kinds of open flames, then full-sized bricks are probably a good idea. But again, not an expert on any of that. I'm just learning as I go. Now, the pretty much last thing of this setup, that it's in theory not necessary, in practice it is probably necessary, is the flux. So this is like a, again like a Polish-made uh, uh, thing and it has some labeling which is only in Polish and says like uh, you should use it oh, it's marketed for like uh, metal brackets things mounting soldering in place so my feeling is that this is sort of like uh, plumbing and or industrial uh, product and the nice thing about this one is that it uh, like the cup it actually has like a brush on the end so you can brush it but it's like pretty big i mean it was slightly too big for what i'm doing here but um, just using it carefully it's like a more like a gel, gel thing uh, it's transparent uh, it's corrosive so you know like do not touch it with your hands but you basically add it and uh, I haven't tried soldering like metal wise without it and I probably won't so I cannot tell you if this uh, helps a lot but it definitely does not uh, do any damage so again you know setting up yourself for maximum opportunity of actually doing the thing that you're doing successfully so yeah a small setup but as you can see I'm doing it at the same bench that I do at my actual like you know like daytime work and other stuff so I really like it about this kind of a setup that you do not need, again, you know, shoebox uh, things, a separate room or a workspace. You can actually just like plop it wherever you're doing the, uh, let's say, normal people's uh, uh, stuff. So yeah, once we're here, I don't think there is, uh, I think this will be like uh, the next photo. Yes. So the next photo is the where it actually lives. So this is from last week when I just finished it. So as you can see here, the rack is exactly designed to go here and the fact that one of the ends is longer it's perfectly useful here because you know this is the right side push it to the right and uh, have it here so yeah and uh, again like added more like have more length of the u-shape just you know like if i want to add more uh, rods later like the packets of rods the bunches as i call them and yeah, I think that's an interesting point here. Just you know, like try to think about the future, not just the current need, or like in simple terms, give yourself some slack now, so then you know later down the road things are just easier. And yeah, uh, last uh, photo, just you know, like a uh, bonus material, and because uh, this was like after I was doing all the labels. So yeah, so it's actually uh, seven of them. Yeah, I can count. It's seven of them. And we'll see how that first, how useful this is. Maybe there will be a video because uh, I really like bought it because I was thinking, well, I'm gluing my plastics together. Maybe I can plastic my plastics together, you know, just melt them, add some of this material and have it even more sturdy. Don't know. We'll see. But yeah. Oh, and one last addendum. Obviously, the places where, uh, well, the places that, yeah, the places, the sites where you are soldering together, 
if it's zinc coated or whatever, you need to grind them. I mean, that's probably should be obvious, but you know, just an, as an addendum, as I'm here talking to my uh, monitor, basically, <laughs> it's a fun stuff. In any case, uh, the outro will be from the intro, you know, time traveling with uh, video editing and stuff. Thanks for watching. Uh, please keep the inspiration flowing. And yeah, I mean, more stuff, more methods, uh, you know, possibilities are endless. Thanks and bye.